Well, the dead parrot sketch lives, but not I gather in the Amnesty Gala. Why is that, Michael Palin? Well, John's forgotten it. <laughs> After all these years, he had an expensive course of therapy, and it's been totally expunged from his brain by expensive laser treatment. We've discovered something better. You've discovered what's yes, that? Yes, we've gone back through the files. We've done Parrot Shop now uh, about 4,000 times, I should yes. think. In, it didn't yes. sort of well, we had a bad moment times. at Drury Lane when Michael broke up, which he's always doing on stage, because unfortunately he's very undisciplined when he's actually performing in the theatre, which is a shame, but that's the way it goes. And um, when we uh, forgot the next, the next line, um, <laughs> I turned to the audience and said, what is the next line? Four or five people in the front row gave it to me, and whereupon we picked it up and were able to go on with it. So we think this time we might have a competition. <laughs> Sorry, but don't you find audiences clamouring for those sketches that they know and love by heart almost? Don't you find that if you perform on the stage, they want you to do those same sketches? They do. They clearly want us to do it, but I think they want to do it more. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we ought to do is ask the audience up on stage to do parrot sketch, and John and I can go off and have a quick drink. <laughs> but uh, no, we're doing a, a one that is better, I think. Mm -hmm. Which one is that, though? It's called Cheese Shop. What's and the essence There's a small it? group of people who like Cheese Shop very much. Mm -hmm. uh, a fifth year Aficionados of, of uh, formaggio comedy. <laughs> I'm afraid it's another shopkeeper, you know. Yeah. That is my, my um, lot in life, to be the shopkeeper. Why do you have this thing about John. shops? Well, John has a thing about shops. I mean, Cheese Shop and, and uh, Parrot Sketch were both written by John and Graham. Um, and basically, he needs a sort of shopkeeper, sort of uh, <laughs> wet, who <laughs> step behind the counter and be abused for about four minutes and get the odd laugh where you can, you know, raiding party here and there. But uh, Cheese Shop is, is a vintage one. I'm glad that because we're not doing Pet Shop, we're going to do something new. Do you yeah. find it at all ironic that in Monty Python you were trying to get away, really, weren't you, from sketches? And yet the things you're remembered by generally are sketches, aren't they, John? Yes, that's quite right. Does I that think worry you? Well, no, not really, because I thought the sketches in the first series in particular were actually very good. I think they were the best things we wrote. And then we got kind of skillful at doing flow of consciousness and doing mm. clever things with the shape of the show. But when we go back to the stage show, it's the, it's the first yes. series that we tend to raid. I don't think we had anything against sketches. It was just that a lot of good ideas were never included in, in pre-Python shows because they didn't have an ending. So, yeah. I mean, uh, it didn't mean that we, we were anti-sketches. If a sketch did have an ending and worked, like, I mean, the pet shop or the dirty fork sketch in the restaurant, then, then fine. And they always had a nice rounded quality to them, which I, I always liked. But we never had a, a proper punchline to pet shop. We used to change it every yes, week. Yes, right, yeah. I wanted to ask you about the title for the Amnesty Gala. It's called The Secret Policeman's Ball. Is that political or sexual, that joke? Um, uh, well, I suppose since you uh, basically, <laughs> no, Michael, uh, is sexual. Is it your title? Uh, no, I'm glad you asked me that. No, it's Martin Lewis's title. I can pin that one on him, but I thought it was quite funny. I didn't know there were nice. any secret policemen around, as it was an Am Amnesty International Gala. Well, we always wonder if there'd be anybody sitting in the third row taking photographs over their shoulder. But uh, no, I think it, it's a very relaxed kind of affair, and we b deliberately keep it unpolitical. Nobody comes on and makes important speeches, you know, halfway through to remind people that they ought not really to be enjoying themselves or anything. It's very difficult, because sometimes people say, you know, well, this is about people being, being hurt and tortured, um, and you ought not to be too flippant about it. And the answer is, I sort of feel that everybody knows that anyway, and therefore we can just go ahead on the assumption that the rest of the audience is intelligent enough to bear that in mind if they want to. You know? You've both done this kind of gala before, haven't you? I wonder what happens on these occasions when you put people like yourselves, Peter Cook, Jonathan Miller together, John Wells, John Fortune. Is there a lot of hidden competition? Well, <laughs> who's going to wear the most makeup? Those sort of little <laughs> things are noticed. You know, who's wearing two pairs of underpants? This sort of thing. You suddenly notice satirists. <laughs> You've known her to mard all your life, and you see what they wear underneath the. Uh... <laughs> That sort of thing goes on, but it's, it's quite informative. It was very matey last year. Yes, they actually years ago. Everyone's going out of their way to be terribly nice to each yeah, other. Yeah, that's right. Oh, super, loved your thing about the, you know, the man who does the, um, you know, the, the two sticks. Lovely, terrific. Mm, must do that yes, again. Yes, I think the fear you know, of being thought feeling. competitive is mm. greater than the desire to be competitive. It's very difficult to say to people like, like we could say to the Beyond the Fringe people, we loved your stuff, without sounding terribly sort of mm -hmm. mawkish and sentimental. And yet, doing the show together. One could sort of exchange bits of information, and it was nicer, and it was a good yeah. atmosphere. It was actually quite crowded in the wings, Mike. It was quite funny, because when yes, you tried, I, right. I tried to nip into the wings to watch Peter Cook doing the judge right. sketch, mm -hmm. and it was packed with people up four feet away from Peter. You know. Do you feel a sort of reverence towards the Beyond the Fringe generation, in fact, John yes. and Peter Cook, do you? Yes, definitely. Mm. Do you feel you borrowed from mm. them, or learnt from them? Uh, borrowed some stuff from them, certainly, from Peter Cook, certainly. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought they were real heavyweights. I mean, Beyond the Fringe was so consistently good yeah. throughout and I think all the performers all had a sort of individual quality which which was terrific I mean they were absolute comedy heavyweights and all that stuff
I get the impression, John, that even at a gala, you're still worrying about the laughs you get or why you didn't get certain laughs on certain lines. Is that true? Mm. Yeah, I think so, yes, mm. if it doesn't work. Because after all, they paid money, you know, even if it is a charity. Mm. And it's nice, it's very mm. satisfactory if you go on and, and you get the laughs in the right place and you mm. come off and the operation is at an end. You know, it's been successful, they've had their laughs, you've done the end. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. it's There's actually always... There's a rather nice atmosphere. It's, uh, there yeah. was a, the poke in the eye, and I think there will be this one. Of, uh, it's late night, people are sort of relaxed. The people who've come along to see it are people who want to see comedy at that, that sort of hour. You know, if you bother to stay up till 11.15 to come and see a show, you must want to see it. So there is a sort of feeling that you've got to do your best. And, and There's a the lovely audience well to play to, and they're very fast, too. Yeah. They, they laugh loudly and for a short time. You know, they yeah. don't sort of go on like drunken audiences with blah, 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 and they go on for about five minutes and a half, you but can't you all speak. But come together for these amnesty galas. Do you ever wish you came together on stage more often? Michael? Uh, what, well, everybody. I yes, mean, everybody. the whole, the whole, sort the whole of beyond strata the of British comedy generation. over the last yeah. 90 years. Uh, I think probably it's enough, really. Uh, uh, That's you the know, pleasure, really, isn't it, Mike? Perking I mean, I was tremendous, but if we'd, done it, if we'd done it every six months, I, I think it wouldn't have worked. And I, I'm looking forward to this one because there's been a break. Brief last word, John. Is it going to be planned or chaotic next week, the gala? I think it should be quite well planned, but, I mean, we haven't had any rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any... Uh, we've got one black curtain we can drop in, and, and the same night in, they're using an misbehaving. Oh, sorry. <laughs> John, you're directing the show, aren't you, the Amnesty Gala, well. for the first time. I mean... What actually is it like directing? Well, it's, it's a question of contacting all the people, finding out who, who can do it, and then agreeing with them what material they want to do, what sort of material they're actually going to enjoy doing. Because I've tried not to twist arms and make few people feel guilty and do it for that reason. Everybody's doing it really wants to do it. And then it's a question of getting the right running order and sorting out the lighting, I mean, which is pathetic, because we have to use the, the, the lights in the theatre for ain't misbehaving, because we have, what, half an hour between the, the time that they finish and we go on at 11.15. You have been seen quite a lot lately, haven't you, on various media. Are you beginning to feel overexposed? Well, I think you know, it's up to you to ask yourself that question. No, the BBC, I think, are making up for ignoring us when we did Python. No, it's been ten years since it. They're, they're rather keen to have us on again. And you're on straight off this programme. Oh, are we? Oh. We must get home. Quick. <laughs> Thank you very much for departing John Cleese and Michael Palin.